Simon. Number one. So, this happened quite a few years ago. I was probably 12 or 13 at the time, and was staying at a hotel with my parents, aunt, uncle, and cousin, who's a year older than I am, and thus 13 or 14 at the time. One night, our parents decided to go get coffee together at the little cafe in the lobby of this hotel. Now, it's important to know that this was one of those hotels that was set up over a few buildings, with its hallway set up outside the hotel, like a multi-story motel. You could access the halls by stairs on the corner of the buildings. The cafe my parents went to was several buildings away from the one we were staying, but that it wasn't a problem for my cousin and I, seeing as the pool was just downstairs. At about 8 o'clock, we texted our parents on her flip phone, put on our bathing suits, and went downstairs to the pool. Things were fine at first. We swam around and caught up on things that had happened at school, the boyfriends she'd broken up with, etc. Eventually, we ended up just quietly floating on our backs, watching the stars. Without looking over at my cousin, I said something to the effect of, Wow, nice night, huh? In a weird voice, hoping to earn a laugh. <laughs> when I heard a guy's chuckle though, I sat up in the water really fast, my face quickly growing red. I hadn't noticed that I had floated away from my cousin, and was now next to some guy. He was probably in his early 20s, and he offered me a friendly glance, an eyebrow raising. Yeah, I guess it is. At 13, I was cripplingly shy, so I just gave a nervous laugh and hightailed it back over to my cousin, who promptly burst into laughter and started making fun of me, jokingly demanding if he was cute and if he really had laughed at the dumb voice I had made. I was too embarrassed to find the situation funny and stayed really close to her not daring to glance back down to the other end of the pool where he was now sitting on the edge. My cousin, Lizzie, just moved on, chatting about some random things as we wandered in the pool. She got progressively quieter though, eventually playfully splashing me to get my attention. Your new boyfriend's still watching us, she noted. And even though she was still grinning, her voice didn't sound quite so teasing anymore. I glanced over to where he was meant to be, and sure enough, he was still sitting on the edge of the pool, watching us. She splashed me again. Dude, just don't pay him any attention. You may not know much about guys, but I do, and the trick is to just ignore him. She wasn't exactly wrong. I was homeschooled and didn't ever talk to any guys older than I was, and in my eyes, she was an expert on worldly wisdom. I watched her face, mimicking her and playfully splashing back. Maybe we should go and get mum or your mum or something, I said as she shook her head. No, let's go back to the hotel room. I don't want my mum to freak out. That seemed like a good idea to both of us. Her mum was kind of terrifying when she was mad. We can text her when we get out there. I nodded, moving and pushing myself out of the pool, grabbing our towels and shoes. She made some joke about what was going on, but I didn't hear it. The guy was standing up too, though he seemed to be pretty casual about getting his own things. When I looked back at her, her expression confirmed she had seen it, but she just kept putting on her shoes. I followed suit, walking close behind her when she turned to head towards the stairs. We began walking up them, both of us a little nervous but trusting it was just coincidence, until we heard footsteps behind us on the stairs. A brief glance down showed the same guy just a flight behind us, meeting my gaze with a little grin. He didn't seem drunk or high, at least from my sheltered perspective. Lizzie, I said, quietly trying to alert her that he was so close. She was moving up the stairs much faster now. 
I know. Let's go to the wrong floor. We can loop back around then just go to our rooms. We'll call mom once we get there. She promised, seeming more strained. Her pretty face screwed up a bit with anxiety. As an avid reader of mystery, it seemed like the best possible choice. So we got off two floors early and Speed walked down the outdoor hall and around the corner. As soon as we were out of sight, Lizzie grabbed my hand, taking off at a run and nearly jerking me off my feet. Before that moment, I hadn't been legitimately scared, but fear is infectious. I squeezed her hand, keeping up pace as footsteps that weren't ours began echoing on the same floor we had chosen to loop around on. We whipped around the next corner and the next, until we breathlessly found the stairs again and took them two at a time. It prompted a high-pitched squeal from Lizzie, who at this point was more dragging me along than anything else. I was so scared out of my wits and practically paralysed, tripping up the stairs and down the hall on our floor. She jammed the key into our room's door and pushed me inside, slamming the door and drawing the blinds as soon as we were inside, bursting into tears as soon as the door was locked. I felt numb. She was crying more from adrenaline than anything, but after she had calmed down, she wasted no time picking up the phone and trying to call her mum, who didn't pick up. Then my mum, who similarly didn't have her phone on. At the age of 12, it felt like we must have waited hours sitting on our bed, hugging each other and shivering from still wearing wet bathing suits. We did end up calming down though, offering each other rationalizations of what just happened. Maybe we had just picked that guy's floor. Maybe he hadn't been trying to follow us. When you're scared, it's honestly surprisingly easy to eventually just believe things were all coincidence. Much calmer we decided to do a really dumb thing. Go out to the car to get Lizzie's activity bag full of snacks and her Game Boy. It seemed like an alright idea at the time, since we both believed it had just been a coincidence and since we were both starving. We wrapped up in towels, she grabbed her mum's keys and her cell phone and we made a plan at the hotel room door. We lock ourselves in the car if this guy comes back and call whatever numbers we can think of. If he appears while we were walking back, we'd go to the lobby and find our parents. It seemed pretty foolproof at the time. Now, just kind of horror story dumb. Nothing happened, until we got to the parking lot in front of our building, when we hear a voice shout at us from one of the halls. Hey girls, what the hell do you think you're doing cuties? I looked back behind us to where the creepy guy was leaning on the rails on our floor. Lizzie gave some sort of unearthly screech and grabbed my hand again, dragging me along before I could get a better look. She yanked open the car door and dove inside as I tumbled after her, locking the car as soon as we were both inside. As soon as she had caught her breath, she untangled herself from me and pulled herself into the back of the minivan back into the furthest row and motioning for me to follow. I did so, hunkering down with her between the seats. I had never felt like my own breathing was loud before, but as we lay there in dead silence, it seemed ungodly loud. Then, tapping. I squeezed my eyes shut, not even wanting to know what he was doing outside the car. But the sound of tapping was unmistakable, like he was just drumming his fingers on the window. Lizzie pulled me tight, not moving, like he wouldn't be able to see us if we just held still enough. I don't know how long we stayed there, frozen in terror. I wasn't sure what was worse, the darkness of keeping my eyes closed, or what it would be like to look up and see him standing there. And just like that, he stopped. Neither of us moved for another 10-15 minutes or so. I started crying, scared to death, Lizzie just holding deathly still, until she began pushing me to sit up, hands rough. I realised what she was doing a moment later, when I heard her dialing on the phone, and the sound of each of our parents' voicemail. Hello, we are not available now. She didn't call 911. Maybe now that we're older, we would've. 
But at 13, 911, who was a number reserved for house fires and murders, not guys in their 20s following little girls to the car. I know, stupid. We eventually ran out of our car and back to the hotel, slamming and locking the door and falling into a sobbing leap inside. When our parents did get back, they bemoaned not having had their cell phones on and soothed us, eventually convincing us that though the guy was creepy, we hadn't been in any danger. I think they thought that was the truth, and honestly, it was what we all wanted to believe. Lizzie and I saw him a few times after that, mostly at night when he sat by the pool and offered us a little grin every time we passed. But we were always with our parents until we left the hotel. When he saw us packing our bags and leaving with our parents, he offered us this forlorn little wave that no one but me saw, mouthing something to me. See you later, cutie. I didn't tell my parents. It didn't seem worth it. It's not till now that I realized how creepy this guy really was, and while he could be just some harmless guy who thought it was hilarious to follow preteen girls around a hotel, I'm glad I never saw him again. Number 2 This is still an ongoing ordeal. It started last week and I'm still trying to figure out how to handle the insanity that has quickly taken over my life. I have recently moved to a new town and have been job hunting. I stopped by a hotel on the shoreline and went in to see if they needed someone for desk work. Inside it was vacant, dark and smelt stale. The man behind the desk had an extremely thick accent and it was difficult for me to understand him. It seemed like he was the only person in the whole building and I got a strange vibe from the whole place but stayed to fill out the application and turn it in as quickly as possible. I could feel him staring at me the entire time. The man muttered something under his breath and took my application. After I left, I decided I most likely would not be accepting a position there because of the strangeness of the situation and really regretted leaving my phone number, address and other personal info on the application. Later that evening, I am at home watching the Olympics in my living room, around 10pm or so. I go into my bedroom to grab my phone off the charger, and I see I have a missed call from just a few minutes earlier. It's strange for anyone to be calling me so late, but I redialed the number to satisfy my curiosity. A woman with a thick accent answers and demands to know who is calling. I politely told her that I had a missed call from this number, and she starts screaming, No, 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 Ghost XX Glitter, at the top of her lungs and hangs up. It freaked me out that she had just used my name in her crazy talk, but figured it was some crackhead that missed out my number. I took my phone with me back into the living room and sit down. Right then, my phone starts ringing again. I answer, and it's a man from the hotel, yelling my name over and over again. He's screaming at the top of his lungs, and I can hear the woman yelling too. I could catch pieces of what they were saying, but in between their accents and both of them screaming, it was difficult to get it all. I heard, Disturb my phone. Disturb your life. You can't see. And that's about it. I hung up really fast and proceeded to flip out. They called back 14 times within 20 minutes. Thankfully, I don't have my voicemail set up, so they couldn't leave any. My husband came home around midnight and I told him what was happening. He laughed it off and said they were probably on drugs and just dialed my number to mess with me. I really hated the fact that these people heard a decent chunk of my personal information but I figured they were too crazy to do anything but make freaky phone calls at night. I finally calmed down enough to go to sleep around 3 in the morning. About half an hour later, I wake up to my dog barking and charging at the back door. I know immediately something is wrong because she never acts like this and is well trained. 
My husband and I both sprinted into the living room and saw a hand reaching through the doggy door, clawing at the tile. I screamed and my husband grabbed me and went into the bedroom and locked the door. I dialed the police and thankfully they were there within ten minutes. The man was long gone, but I knew exactly who it was. I gave them my statement and showed them my call log from earlier. They called the number but it was a prepaid phone, so there wasn't a lot they could do to trace it. By the time the police left, it was around 5.30 in the morning, which was okay with me since I couldn't be able to sleep anyways. My husband, who was really pissed off, and I decided to go to the hotel to try to get some information about the guy and inform the staff that this guy was nuts. We spoke to the manager there and told us that the man I described had been fired a year ago for stalking a housemaid. What the hell was he doing in the lobby last week then? They checked the security cameras and discovered that he was constantly around the hotel and staring in the windows. I guess he had snuck in while the manager left the desk right as I walked in. The manager contacted the police and was able to file trespassing charges against him. Now, at least the police are looking for him. At this point, I'm in tears. I had given a crazy person all of my info and he was harassing and stalking me. I'm still receiving phone calls from strange numbers during the night, but luckily he hasn't returned to the house as far as I know. I contacted my references I had used on my application to let them know what was going on. Apparently, my old boss was left to voicemail around 2 in the morning on Monday of heavy breathing and perhaps some sex noises and moans. This past week, I haven't been able to sleep at all. I'm a nervous wreck and jump out of my skin every time my phone rings or I hear my dog barking. Number 3 Excuse me for not being an amazing storyteller, but this is definitely a true story. Not me specifically, but my mother used to work at a hotel in Washington DC back in the 90s as a housekeeper slash maid since she needed money because she was a refugee from Vietnam. Even though she didn't know much English at the time, she knew enough to get by at her job and all the other staff and hotel guests loved her because of how sweet she was. Because of this, any time high profile guests such as the Backstreet Boys would stay at the hotel, the manager always sent my mum to clean the room since she was good at it. Anyways, one day a guest came, who we will refer to as Mr. M because I don't know his real name, and checked into their most expensive suite. As usual, the manager told my mum to go take care of his room. As she got there, there was a do not disturb sign so she told the manager she would come back later. What was weird was that no one was ever allowed in his room. The man stayed there for over a month, and not once did he let a staff member come in to clean. However, he paid a lot and he gave a warm welcome every time he passed a staff member or a housekeeper, so no one paid him any attention. Then, one day, people didn't see him anymore, so they assumed he checked out, even though the receptionist had no account of this. Since it had been so long since the room was cleaned, and the do not disturb sign wasn't on the door anymore, the manager told my mum to go check it out and try to clean up what she could. As she got to the floor and unlocked the door to the room, a disturbing smell hit her. She couldn't figure out what it was, but she continued to survey the room, which was disgustingly messy. Her words were that it looks like someone had thrown a rave, even though no other guest seemed to have ever gone into that room besides Mr. M. It had looked like Mr. M had deserted the place without telling anyone. Anyways, my mum was still shocked by the smell. She tried to track it down. As she followed the smell, she could tell it was coming from the hotel room closet when she opened the closet, there was nothing but a cardboard box on the ground from which the smell was resonating. In the moment from being a housekeeper, my mother's first instinct was to open the box to see what was inside and clean it or throw it out. 
when she opened the box, what she saw scarred her to this day. It was the rotting, decomposing head of a young woman chopped off. My mother immediately screamed and got out of there, where she then fainted in the elevator. Once she woke up, cops were everywhere and the hotel was like a CSI scene. The manager told her that Mr. M wasn't his real name and he used a fake credit card to check in. The head of the woman was identified to be that of a prostitute. I don't know much more or any other nitty gritty details, but I'm sure one can look it up on the internet for more information. Needless to say, my mum quit that day. Number 4 A bit of background. This happened in the summer, and I believe I was about 12 at the time. I was staying in a hotel in a fairly large city with my mum and my younger brother. We were visiting other extended family, but chose not to stay in their house. My brother is younger than me by a decent amount, so I was usually told to keep an eye on him. On the day we arrived, my mum told me to do just that while she checked us in and received our room card. So, my brother and I sat down on a couch in the lobby and relaxed a little bit. While we were sitting, a man in about his mid-forties walked into the hotel. The couch was facing the hotel doors, so I got a good look at him. I remember that he was a very average looking man. Describing his features in detail could generate several different images. The guy comes in and sits on the couch opposite ours. I didn't think anything of it, until I realized that he didn't go up to the counter first. He just came in and sat down. It made me feel a little uncomfortable. I thought that he might have followed us in. Thankfully, my mum called us over and told us that our room was ready. We left the lobby and went to our room. Shortly afterwards, we left the hotel to go meet family members, and I forgot about the man for the rest of the day. We returned at about 7, and my mum told us that we could go swimming in the hotel pool. We all went to our rooms, changed, and went to the pool. A few minutes after we got in the shower, the same man from before walked in and sat down. He was wearing jeans and a sweater, so he definitely wasn't going swimming. Again, we didn't think much of it until I could see that my mum was visibly worried. She pointed him out to me and said that if he didn't leave within five minutes, we needed to go back to our rooms. Five minutes passed and he was still there, so we got our things and left. By then, it was close to 8pm. We had brought a rented movie to watch, so we planned to watch that and go straight to bed. I noticed that my mum was a little on edge because of the man watching us, and I got a little more worried myself too. Halfway through the movie, my mum got up to get in the shower. While she was in there, someone knocked on the door and said, Housekeeping in a high-pitched voice. I thought it was weird that the cleaning staff would come this late, but we needed another towel, so I answered the door. I wish I hadn't been so stupid. It was the creepy man. He gave me a smile and a little wave. I just stood there, kind of motionless. My mind automatically went to the worst possible situation, kidnapping, rape, torture, etc., I heard the water in the shower turn off. He stood there as well for a moment, and then he spoke. How was your swim? At that point, my mum came out of the shower, saw the man at the door, pulled me back and slammed the door shut. She locked it. Then, she called the front desk from her hotel phone to report the guy. I told her to just call the police, but she didn't listen. She then requested we switch rooms. I then heard footsteps stomping down the hallway away from our room. Thankfully, the guy had left. After that, we switched hotel rooms and didn't see the guy again during our stay. 
Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader here. I hope you enjoyed listening through that. If you did, please slap a like. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to be notified of future uploads? If you have a story you want me to narrate, please send it to my email in the description box. Once again, thanks a lot for listening.